bananas, going bananas, something's going bananas. There's always someone going bananas. Banana, banana rummer, he did all that. Okay, alright, we're in, it's happening, it's working. So at least something's working today. Okay, and that's there. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, the sound is good. I can just pull that little thing out of there. We are going to start in a second because um, I'm not going to muck around. I'm just going to get this done. This is, uh, this is really about behind the DM screen. What do I do when you guys aren't watching me? And uh, today, I'm essentially going to do exactly that. I'm going to show you what I do. It, it sounds like, ooh, some sort of secret, but it's just not. We're going to look at maps because um, I have a stack of adventures that I have run, notes coming out my ears, and I need to organize it. So I thought, well, actually, I'll just show you what I do. So while I'm sorting through my notes and constructing my map folder from all of my old adventures, because I don't really want the notes, I just want the maps so I can reuse them, I would show you exactly how it's done, or like how I do it anyway. So that is what we're going to do today. So uh, we're going to crack into it and make sure that you are... Uh, how's it going, Daniel? So I'm going to chat through this whole thing. It isn't going to be quite the same as you're used to. You know, I'll do my, my normal uh, intro in a second, but by all means, just chat away as you like, ask questions as you see stuff, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, there are a couple of things I have, but we'll start off. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I'm going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do when I'm not in front of the, uh, the, the camera, when I'm not in front of the screen, when you don't see me usually doing any kind of live stream. I thought I would just do this in the background, and I thought, no, no, actually it's probably something you should see, so you know what I'm up to. Um, and it would probably answer a lot of your questions that you guys keep asking me, uh, so you can sort of see what I've been up to. So I have two stacks of notes here. I'm going to go through this and I'm going to create myself my, I guess my D&D map folder. So I have one of these. I mean ring binders, you can use a ring binder if you really want. But I prefer these little flippy things with the see-through sleeves that I can stick things into. It means I don't have to punch holes in my maps. I don't really like holes in my maps. And, that, and things get sort of messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this. And we'll chat as you like. And I will show you what I'm doing. And I'm going to pull maps out and stick them into here. That's essentially what I'm doing. It doesn't sound horribly exciting. It probably won't be actually. It'll probably be like one of the worst videos I've ever done. But that is, that is, this is what happens behind, you know, behind the screen. When you're not in front of the, uh, on the, at the table with the players. So how's it going Daniel? Thank you for joining us. And uh, Joseph, what's up? Well, this is what's up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push this out of the way because I want to sort of create a bit of space and I want to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I, I do plan to recycle my paper. Now I know that sounds strange. I'm going to put it on my garden. I've got a bed, well I've got herb gardens and I need to put paper around them. So I'm going to just start off, get, get cracking into here. I'm going to try to keep all of my activities sort of in the front so you can see what's going on. So you might have noticed I have uh, the, the Land Beyond the Magic Mirror, which is a Gary Gygax adventure. Uh, this thing, which I thought was quite fun when I was running it, is based on Alice in Wonderland. And uh, I don't know if any of you have actually uh, read the book, uh, Through the Looking Glass. That's based, this, this whole adventure is basically just ripped off from that. And a lot of the hand-drawn maps I don't really need, so I'm just going to pull them out. Um, so what I tend to do is I try to reuse the maps that I've got. Um, I'm not sure I really like that map enough that I want to keep it. I'll think about it. I'm going to put it over here for now. And the Feast Hall, uh, don't need that. I might keep this. Crafting Magic Items. I don't know. Have I, have I actually... I suppose I should upload this particular piece of paper to the Facebook group, House D&D, so you guys can have a look at it. This is like my cheat sheet for... Crafting magic items having nothing to do with maps, of course. So we will just uh, put it on the other side out of the way and Just cycle through here as you can see I have a lot of junk, you know I keep 
heaps and heaps of stuff and I'm gonna reuse this I've used this before so I'm definitely keeping that and another I tend to print out uh, sort of uh, continent maps with no markings like no markings on it so I can just add things in as I go uh, what's that Joseph do you use the map of Faerun yeah I do it, it should be in here somewhere I just gotta find it um, so yeah I do use those maps and it should it should come across it at some point this is just a bigger version of that one so I'm gonna keep that and breaking it down I don't think I'll need those magic mirror house mmm it's, oh, it's uh, okay I'm gonna put it in the maybe maybe pile this is the definitely pile it's going on top of the uh, fold I'm gonna put it in there shortly but uh, yeah this is one of the oh okay I've forgotten about this this is a magic item the coil of Megar uh, basically it's a magic item custom built and it's an electron running ring that uh, is stylized with a lightning bolt on it and I think it's um, I think it was revolving around a item that I found in the adventure I needed to convert it over so it's got some properties you have to be attuned to it um, and it allows you to cast two spells or two additional spell slots um, and it's a, obviously a spell that you have to have prepared and it's up to third level it's pretty powerful and it can store extra um, spells in it as well so it's quite a nice item we'll keep that uh, the mace of genuflection genuflection oh this was a weird magic item I'm gonna <laughs> plus one mace and it does additional damage basically um, makes them prone I'm not going to go into the details of that because this is a map video rather than a Fred's custom magic items video um, so we'll just keep fluffing through here by all means ask your questions as we go because you know, I keep notebooks on things I never seem to write enough in them to be for it to be worth it what have I got in here the candy wand a wand that creates jelly beans or candy shoots it shoots that's right it shoots confectionery ha <laughs> ha sweets and the gazebo that comes to life called Greg what about that Jim the cricket yeah that's Disney uh, wand of monster wandering monsters and oh, okay all right um, do I need oh I might hang on to that because it's kind of got magic item stuff that I didn't turn into something else and we just keep a lot of these sheets are just my notes and you can see just how scrawly and messy they, they are I mean I do have some sort of process to this but most of the time it's really just slip it into one of those clear envelopes and so I can see everything and uh, oh some blank paper I might use that blank paper later on is there another pile I can dump stuff on yeah they're down there okay what have we got here the land behind behind the magic mirror I thought I just went through that or was it no I didn't that's right I went through all of my notes on it not the actual thing itself okay uh, what's that Joseph would you have ever used ten oh, okay ten towns okay um, I don't know ten towns you'll have to um, you'll have to give me a bit more information Joseph I don't honestly know what you're talking about ten towns lots of crazy artwork in this I don't know if there's necessarily maps in here that I want to uh, bother using. Do I want to keep this adventure? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. I think most of it is. I played it out once to the very end. I don't think I could do it again. It's like um, eating old pizza running adventures for a second time for me. So I tend not to bother doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all, that's all going to be just junkable. Okay, Ravenloft. Yes, I did run Ravenloft for those of you who are wondering. This is the original Ravenloft, which will have the original map in it as well. Uh, I'm leaving that over there. Put that into the too hard basket, which is obviously going to be part of the culling process. Okay, so I pull this out. See, this is what I do. I just chuck it into one of these clear envelope things. And uh, reuse the envelope, which is great. So Ravenloft, it's got a great map in it. It's black and white. I'm just not entirely sure if um, the original map 
which is pretty awesome, is something I want to keep. So I'm going to put there just for now. Uh, what's that, Joseph? It's a map set that uh, set that and oh, set in the Forgotten Realms. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm 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 prone to sort of dropping all sorts of things into existing adventure worlds anyway. Uh, you know, small town here that nobody's ever heard of, and it might have come from a different location. Uh, some interesting artwork, but uh, let's just keep the flow going. Oh. Did I create enough space for myself? Probably not. Drink of water while I organise myself. Trying to make sure that I grab all the bits and pieces that I want to keep. Yeah, yeah. There you go, there's a um, picture of, what is that? Some sort of undead creature. And that will be the original, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, 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 I can't remember. <clears throat> Strad's after her anyway. A lot of cool cut and artwork. Surprising, oh, is that Helga? So it's one, some sort of vampire anyway. Okay. And as you can see, even though I do have maps, I do draw maps out as I go for the players. I don't usually rely on them to try and get it all right. All right, so that's all ditchable. And I'm, that's all pretty handily sort of placed. I think I will keep the Ravenlock original uh, map. That'll, that'll stay in my packet of things to keep. Uh, the Vault of the Draculich. I remember this. I ran this particular adventure as a an event. I think I called it. What was it called? It was called the Dungeons and Dragons Grand Masters, and we had groups of people playing together, cooperating and competitive at the same time, which is a bit strange. A lot of people were a bit shocked by that. It's the first time it had been done in New Zealand, I think, and they played through this adventure. Yeah, it's not bad. It's um, designed for 4th uh, edition, level 4 characters, but everybody started off at level 1. I was, I was pretty ruthless. You know, it didn't really matter how many times they died, so I didn't really worry about uh, that, that taking place. Um, it's got a pretty impressive map on it. This is just the black and white version. I'm going to just put that to the side. I think it's got a, I've got a better version. I think it's in colour. Uh, and it's sort of set out quite nicely. All sorts of things going on. Different level encounters. Some weird looking artwork. What's that? That's uh, Gilrid. Gilrid and Ironbark. Some sort of tree, 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 tree creature right there. Oh. So, yes. And of course we've got the Draculich. I think a few people were like freaked out like, oh, you, what, there's a Draculich at the end of this? Yeah, there, there is a Draculich at the end of this. In fact, they found out that there was a Draculich <laughs> uh, involved at the very beginning. And they were like, Fred, you're crazy. And I said, somebody will take it down. And as it happens, they leveled up and they did. Now this, this map I might keep. This looks quite good. I'll keep that. Uh, this is coloured in. I think this was... We were filling it in with a highlighter as they completed areas. We also had like a computer screen up. So you could, each one was uh, numbered, each location was numbered and then we checked it off on the computer screen so that everybody could see as we went. And this is the color version, um, which I got, I don't know where I got it from. So this is essentially this map in a different form. And it's sort of like, like that. That makes sense? I'm keeping that, that's definitely staying in the, uh, in the collection. Don't think I really need that. Oh, this is a better. This is the color version of the black and white map, right here. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely keeping that. That's nice. Keep that one. And then, of course, the code of conduct for the New Zealand Dungeons and Dragons Masters. Oh, I think Armel has been asking me to give him this, but I don't know if I really want to. I think it's better if it just become part of my garden rather than anybody try to duplicate it. Never running that event again. I don't mind trying to run something else, but I don't feel like that was actually helpful to um, the game. I would much prefer to have a whole lot of people playing in the same adventure with multiple tables 
and they're all working towards a similar goal. I think that's a much better idea. All right, let's put that aside, keeping those. Another adventure, uh, the Isle of Dread or Island of Dread. This is basically King Kong. Think King Kong or Lost World, or I guess I suppose you could even count one of the versions of um, Jurassic Park as sort of a. Uh, this is this is this is a hex crawl. Had a lot of fun with this. Uh, supposed to be for third level to seventh. And this is the um, the beta version. This is the beta version that was produced from the original of the um, adventure, and it will have some maps in it for sure. Okay, what do we got here? So, do I need that? I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile. Ariel, oh, Rakasta Camp. I remember this. I remember this. It's a long time ago. Plateau. Hmm. It's really difficult to know whether you want to keep some of the stuff. This is why I have a sorting process. Sit down for a little while and just sort through stuff. Oh my gosh, I forgot about this. This was really hard for me to find. And um, this was like a letter from Roy Bar Barbasa. Uh, basically, talking about this island so that they had some sort of, uh, I think it's a diary or a letter that they could follow during the adventure. Do I want to keep it? I don't know. I must have it on file somewhere. I don't think I need to. It can go in the bin. But it took me ages to find it. I hunted high and low. I hunted everywhere. And yeah, the 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 uh, D, D next uh, had a reproduction of this particular adventure and I ran my players through it as part of the Wasn't I didn't use the I didn't play or do the play testing for the beta version I was actually part of the alpha play test for the monster manual and I used this to alpha play test monsters So they ran into all sorts of things heaps and heaps of weird stuff things that were supposed to be way too powerful for them. Um, most of my testing took place between levels three through to six, uh, level five as well when I was doing that. And one of the things I learned is that um, players at about fifth level onward can deal with pretty much anything. I'm pretty sure I've got a digital version of that. Anyway, I don't know, that, that, is that the extent of my maps on that? Oh, okay, all right, so be it. Another drink of water. What have we got here? The Carnival of Tears or Carnival of Fears? Ooh. Oh, freaks, some sort of freaks. This will be a Pathfinder adventure. I'm pretty sure either that or a 3.5. Something that I tended to do with the uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e game is I would take adventures from anywhere. It didn't matter what. What game system, didn't matter what um, version of the game. Uh, Menagerie of Freaks. Oh, that's a cool map. I'm going to keep that. That's staying in the pile to keep. Uh, the Blind Peep Show layout. I'm keeping that. That's not bad too. And then the Carnival of Tears. I still have the original adventure, but I'm going to keep that printout. That's, that's a nice map. You never know, I might need it at some point. It's always a chance to reuse maps, so I do tend to do that. Okay, what have we got here? This is the modern engineering. Modern engineering. Oh, it's like a, that's right, it's like a ghost train. I forgot about this. Keep that as well. And the, the Cold Rider Showdown. The Cold Rider Showdown. It doesn't look that exciting as a map. No, I'm thinking I'm going to ditch that one. I don't think I need that. It doesn't look that exciting. It's not a loss. Okay. Alright. Well, that's another one done. Oh my god. Now, the Tyranny of Dragons. <clears throat> I've played through the Tyranny of Dragons many, many times. And this is Tyranny and Flane. Uh, or was it? Flan. Um, I hated these adventures. These these adventures were just diabolical. Ooh, I'm keeping that. The City of Flane. Hard to get a map of this thing. But I'll keep that, uh, that I can use in my pile of 
Uh, I'm just move that out of the way for now. Otherwise, it's all going to slide off. That's in the pile to keep. And we'll ditch that envelope. And what do we got here? So I'm pretty sure all these maps are sort of hand drawn. They're not very good. They're a bit confusing and um, not really the best sort of uh, maps to keep. I wouldn't even say it was a particularly good adventure. And they certainly made attempts to try and make them worthwhile. But it, it's, you know, it's four hours of adventure and there's 30 pages and I just, oh my gosh. What happened to economy of page use like uh, we used to have when they were creating adventures? And this doesn't do it for me. This is why I don't like running the Adventure League uh, adventures that they put out for the little short ones. I know they, I don't know what they're called now. They used to be called Expeditions. Yeah, that's all going into my garden as uh, worm food. It's worm food. A lot of stat blocks, which I probably won't need. I guess it, they did at least provide you with the stat blocks for adventures and some player handouts. And this is the extent of my map. And another map here. Do I want it? Is it worth keeping? Hmm, it's hard to know. I'm going to put it in the too hard basket and come back to it later. But all the rest is junk as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I'm sure a few of you are wondering, what the heck is this? This is Basum, okay, as in John Carter or John Carter from Mars, for anybody who might have anything, any knowledge of uh, science fiction and fantasy. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs, basically this, this fellow is the one who got, gave uh, George Lucas the ideas for Star Wars. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. So I decided to run this as a D&D 5e adventure and I stuck my players on Barsoom and we ran it, I guess we ran it as a, a very short adventure. I'm keeping this map for sure. It sort of gives you locations so they know sort of where they are. And uh, while they were playing that adventure we had all sorts of weird things taking place. Uh, character relationship links. Oh, I've got a whole sheet of these. I, this is something I need to put on Facebook as well, don't I? So basically this is a list of 1 to 32 different elements that you could get your players to come up with ideas for linking their character with another character at the table. And um, I used to put this out, and I should still do it. I should still put it out and get people to actually engage and create links. Usually I just have a conversation rather than give them a piece of paper um, this was just to help them sort of figure it out. Sometimes they were really good and they were able to come up with something. And on the other side is my social contract for gamers. So basically the rules of my table. Um, keep that for now. That might be something I need to uh, revisit in terms of uploading stuff to Facebook. Okay, so just a bunch of maps here. More maps, more maps, more maps. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Alright, I'll let you see it. Okay, so I was I was being a bit strange. Um, this map is Mars or Barsoom, right? And I had them exploring a ruin. They found a ruin on this world that they had been transported to, and they were exploring the Millennium Falcon. They just didn't realise it. And I had it was all of course buried mostly underground, so they couldn't figure that out. And uh, it, I laid it out like a. I just drew out the map as I went and so as they were exploring the location I was giving them small tips and hints that they were actually in a spaceship. As players they would know this is the Millennium Falcon. As their characters wouldn't know anything. Um, I was describing uh, a Wookiee who had perished. It was just like a skeleton that had bits of hair hanging off it and droids and so forth. Um, do I want to keep it? Actually I think I will. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest surprises I've given my players ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Bit of crossover, you might say, there. Getting a bit weird, getting a bit strange. Uh, but I like doing that, some sort, um, that sort of thing sometimes. And, um, yeah, it was a big shock to them. Suddenly they find themselves inside the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's the Millennium Falcon. And a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Okay, alright. And here is a 
bit of map part. This is from the halls of Under Mountain. This is a section that I burnt and sort of gave to my players and said, look, this is the only bit of the map you have. So figure out where you're going to go from here. I'll keep that. I might use that again. Okay, so what is this? This looks like... Oh, this is just a whole lot of pre-made um, character sheets, so I'll just keep that. I don't want to ditch that. That's not maps, that's not adventures, but it's still useful. That's over there now. Okay, what is this? This looks like a long, long adventure. Oh, these tags here, my one of my players made. Um, put your character name on it, your initiative. I get them to put the initiative on there so I don't have to get them to roll just before an encounter. I usually do it at the very beginning of a session. And passive perception, their floor. And um, yeah, it's got two sides to it. A little place to stick a picture. And I used to hang these over my Dungeon Master screen. It's quite cool. It's a good idea. But uh, I don't need them now. This has got to be the Curse of Strahd. Which I ran for a very long time. At least a year. So I'll grab all of this. But uh, if I can find him, if I can get him to um, send me a link to this, I'll get him to send me a, a PDF and I'll upload it to Facebook so you guys can use it. Just got to hope, somebody's got to remind me. Remind me in the, in the comments so that I do it, otherwise I'll forget. Alright, so, lot of notes. A few drawings that I've done. Oh my gosh. Drawing out anything. That's the temple, the amber temple. Alright. A lot of stuff to throw away. Just, this is just encounters, you know, and I would, I tick them every time I've had their turn. Alright, another map. The werewolf den, alright. Don't think I need to keep that though. That can go. That's all just hand, hand drawn. Uh, this looks like this looks like the Ravenloft Castle. I uh, don't need to keep that. I've got a. I should have a, a decent copy of that somewhere. In fact, I do. I have a big pull-out map, which I will obviously be keeping. Lot of lot of notes on that. It's a whole year's worth of uh, note taking. And of course, what's this? Oh, the past. Oh my gosh, that bridge was so difficult for me to get past. <laughs> and that is um, Briz. Alright. I don't need to keep that though. So if you're a player and you're watching this, this is really for Dungeon Masters only. Because there is definitely going to be spoilers in here. Um, oh, what's this? This is... What is that big mansion with the... Uh, Argus Vault. Argus Vault, that's right. I drew them a bunch of maps for that. Treasure. Treasure. More encounters. Yeah, I'll have to flip through this fairly quickly. I don't know. What about the rest of you? Who uh, Do you keep yourself... Do you keep your maps? I tend to keep the maps rather than keeping all of my notes. You know, once a campaign is done and dusted, I'll tend to ditch the notes and I just keep my maps. And the reason being is I'm I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll use it again. Maybe there'll be a reason for me to use them. I just like I like collecting images, and I obviously keep most of my stuff digitally on a computer, but I also keep some of my stuff uh, on 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 paper as a hard copy, because there's always a time when you want to pull it out, and I don't really carry my laptop around too much. My phone I do always. But you, you know, it's a bit hard to upload a photo or an image of a map and try and figure it out on your phone because the screen's too small. Okay, I can't remember what that was about, but um, Death House. Oh my gosh, you know, that is that is that is definitely an adventure that needs um, some walking through, doesn't it? It's brutal. And more of it. That's the dungeon section. The watch has... Oh, that's the mansion. The mansion. Uh, it's getting messy. I've got papers going everywhere. I'll sort it out later. Uh, okay. What's that, Joseph? Um, I try to keep the maps 
they're handy for beginner campaigns. Yeah, which is probably pretty much what I would be doing. It makes sense, right? You, sometimes you reuse maps. And I tend to reuse my maps a lot. Just the hand-drawn ones I will ditch. Okay. What's this? The Burgermaster's Mansion. It's not not well. <laughs> okay. Alright, this is this right. That's the cats they encountered. I forgot about that. They were they were so petrified of those cats. Okay, more notes, more notes. Let's just burn through this. Did I take many did I print out many maps for that? No, I didn't really. That must have been, it's because I had the the map that they provide in the actual adventure, right? So I probably didn't need it. Okay, so what's this? This God, this is man. Don't lick that. That's carbon dust and dirt. All right. Let's get rid of this. Move that out of the way. I can reuse that. Fu Manchu is a character I was playing. I don't need that anymore. Um, and what is this? Oh, okay. I printed some stuff out for him. Okay, well that was easy. I can get rid of that twice and fast. What is this? This is the Mines of Madness. I should do a review on this adventure for those of you who have never run it or played in it. Um, it is crazy stuff. Scott uh, Kurtz and Chris Perkins and it really it's just supposed, it's supposed to be fun. You, you're going to go through a lot of characters with this thing. I think it's got a reasonable map in it. It's like a fun house. A fun house of of dastardly things. I lost a lot of characters to this uh, adventure. And you should be able to download it from the, what do you call it, the DM Guild. Um, this thing has a ramshackled outhouse. I've, I've said, you know, why are there not toilets in any kind of adventure? Well, this one has a toilet. Yeah. Just don't go in there. If you've never played it before and you're planning to play it, it don't go in the toilet. <laughs> I did. Um, it's got some fun fun artwork. Mostly it's very cartoonish, and I think this is because that's what Scott sort of draws. And really it was it was set up and designed just to figure out how to kill your character as many times as possible. And this fella. That's right, Abracadabracus. Oh, it's Abracadamus. Oh my gosh. Abracadamus. Yes, Abracadamus. <laughs> All right, this is the this is the map. It doesn't look that big, but it's got more than one level. This is the upper level. This is a lower level here. And we're going to keep these maps. I, I'm, I'm sure I will reuse those again. This can all go in my bin. Should I say, not in my bin, on my garden. On my garden, reusing. Alright, so. Got paper clips everywhere. I'm going to have a supply of them shortly. This literally gave you a sheet for running every single encounter. Like initiative chat tracker, how many hit points, laid it all out. Didn't have to draw anything. And the stat block was included. Man, it saved me a lot of time. But I don't need these things. That's probably not something I need to keep at all. Hug Hug, oh that's right, Hug Hug was fun. Hug Hug is um, like a small goblinoid who, who is, who you could befriend? <laughs> yes, the murder ball. Yeah, that's bad news. It even had an initiative um, roll on it. Trying to run away from that thing is not so easy. Okay. And these are all just pre-made encounter sheets. There's even a green dragon in this thing. Oh my gosh. Instant death, you know. Some situations you would come across in there and it was like no saving throw, no attack roll, it's your character just dies because there's no way it can possibly survive this particular encounter. Uh, a lot of handouts. That's right, I've got some more maps there. I think that's just handouts and nothing else. I don't think there's any maps that I want to keep in there. I don't really need to keep any of that. Okay, alright, so what is this? This is the Gravik Swamp. And this has the Crone Island on it, the Lizard Harrow, and the uh, the Mistwood. 
and I used this in an adventure I ran for DMs and a very old adventure which I, I probably should talk about because it's it's actually hard to get the original the original is very hard to find because the original uh, what is it um, the original people who were the managers at TSR didn't like the first printing because it, it really it took the uh, mickey out of them so we're definitely keeping that map and this is the original map for Palace of the Silver Princess so it took me a long time I found the original adventure because the the one they they put out after and they pulled it off the shelves they didn't want anybody to see this thing I should show you the image too that uh, that got uh, got it flagged for um, rewriting it was written by a woman and uh, she had uh, it's funny Gary Gary Gygax really wanted her to be able to publish it without any interference and that just did not happen unfortunately um, there are a bunch of maps in here why why do I feel like I don't recognize any of these things I don't think I need to keep them no I don't think I really need to more of my drawing drawing out maps is what I do right so if you're DM you've kind of had to draw them at some point whether you're making your own adventures or you're drawing it out so the players know where they're going unless of course you're the sort of person who says mm, you got to figure it out yourself uh, okay I'm almost there I included some of my own stuff into this so this is Palace of the Silver Princess it's a DM module B3 introductory model uh, module for characters level 1 to 3 and I run this for Dungeon Masters who basically only people at the table were Dungeon Masters because I never got a chance to sort of play and I ran them through this and um, hopefully we get a chance I don't think the maps are worth keeping but there is certainly some interesting artwork in here oh I think I've got yeah I've got I'll keep two, two copies of that that map's quite cool but there's a piece of artwork in here there's three headed sort of creatures it had a scene in it that looks like uh, there's people sort of uh, well like well they are uh, she's 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 being tortured badly so yes contentious got got into a lot of trouble for this <laughs> and just a, a normal little bear fairly simple encounter and sections were left empty there were room descriptions left empty so that you could write your own stuff very old artwork as you can see uh, some swords at battle a little bit of artwork there here it is this is what got got this thing uh, taken off the shelf for those of you who want to see it uh, this is the original adventure and what got it into so much trouble is this thing because each head of this these giants is a caricature of one of the TSR managers and as you can see um, it's pretty clear that they are caricatures because each face is slightly different and what they've done is they've literally tried to depict the uh, the personality of that particular manager and of course when they spotted this image they were like no that's coming off the shelves but it, it had already been printed put on the shelves and then they took they took them all off the shelves <laughs> I certainly tried to and then they um, got somebody to come back and rewrite the adventure so that so that it didn't look well it didn't put them in a bad light okay so we've got here what whoever this fellow is here he's looking down the uh, down at somebody's cleavage which is obviously not great so <clears throat> somebody here who's a drawler looks angry all the time um, but somebody with a, a beard mustache just looks looks well he does kind of look a bit monstrous doesn't he yeah so this is the image that got uh, it taken off the shelves and what do we got on the back here the garden overgrown statue yeah what is this some sort of strange I think there's a ruby or there's, there were so many weird oh that's it there's so many weird encounters in this thing poltergeists uh, lots of traps weird traps weird monsters I think there's a bubble monster in here it, bubbles that attack you I know that sounds weird 
I think they're literally with bubbles that you you have to fight. Okay. All right. And yeah, this is the this is the whole. This is essentially the uh, the first level, I believe. This is level one. I don't think it's really worth keeping. I think the overall um, area map is a much better map. I'll keep that instead. Okay, so we're getting there. That's, we're almost to the end of pile. Oh gosh, is this Curse of Strahd as well? God, that's right, I probably had more than one. <clears throat> and I, I, was, I was surprised that I'd managed to. So this is my session zero sheet that we went through and agreed upon. And uh, the players that I, I had at my table, I've um, seen that already. This is probably just printouts for players. Okay. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Yeah. I used a, a bit of Ar Unearthed Arcana. I used the Revised Ranger because um, I, I felt like it was uh, not getting enough love. And I think essentially the reason for doing that was because of the new beast master or animal companion rules I, I hardly ever see a beast master played in a game and so this is why i allowed them to play this out now what i don't understand is i could swear that the beast Ma did the beast master make it into xanathar's guide to everything i feel like it didn't make it in there or have i just not read that section of the book yet anyway so we ran through that i thought that was a, a good idea to have a chance at doing that um, backgrounds are printed out. I included a few races from Eberron. I like it. And Changelings, Shifter, the Warforged, Artificer, Dragon Mark, stuff like that. Yep, I included that. I'm pretty sure I included... This is, this is basically the, the Dark Gifts. This is the Adventure League Dark Gifts sheet. It only, they only had four. So if you want more, you had to sort of pick up something else. Uh, and you can get something like that. I don't, didn't think it cost you anything. You can get it off the DM and uh, the Dungeon Master Guild. This is the Player's Companion printed. I should um, I should get it bound. I'll put that aside for now. The Slayer. I included the Slayer just so that they had an option. They wanted to be Monster Slayers. So I thought well, Monster Slayers makes perfect sense in a campaign like this. Minotaur. You guys have all seen this already, so we'll um, we'll uh, chop our way through this. Yeah, don't need to worry about that. It's all underneath the arcana. This is the dark gifts. The blood hunter. Yes, I included the blood hunter in my curse of um, stride campaign, and this guy just had a whole bunch of different dark gifts, and I used, I think I used just about every single one. I don't think I need to keep it though. I've got a digital form of that. And the Blood Hunter printed that out. I feel like he's he's modified it so much that um, yeah, Matthew Mercer's modified it so much since I last printed it, so I won't I won't keep it. Okay, all right, so we're on to pile number two, and I've got a few maps out of it. This is my pile of maps here, the ones I'm going to keep. These are the ones I'm not too sure about. So what is this? This is the Ivory District. The Ivory District. Oh, this is a Pathfinder map. And I cannot remember for the life of me um, what the location was, but we're still going to keep it. I, I like that one. Uh, Falcon's Hollow. A key and a map. I'm going to keep that as well. And Falcon Hollow environment. So the area around Falcon's Hollow. So the township's here, and this is the... Yes. I remember this. I ran that adventure as well. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a pre-made adventure. I cannot for life of me remember what it was though. Um, now why did I need this? This is definitely part of the Pathfinder world. I'm still going to keep it though. Falcon um, Crest. For those of you who are familiar with 4th um, Ed Edition and their locations and maps. We're keeping this. Keep that as well. It's really hard trying to get information on that location and setting was super difficult. And it includes sort of a key. It's key locations within the Winter Haven. Uh, Ninta Vale. I think I need to keep this. Just the notes itself. 
It's nice, short and quick and easy. It's kind of handy. It goes with my maps quite nicely. And that's um, Full Crescent. Full Crest. Full Crest. Full Crest. Not Full Crescent. Full Crest. Yep. I'll keep that as well. I think that doesn't have a map, but it, um, I do actually have the map here. And uh, it will help me sort of uh, lay things out. I've got an interval, so I'll keep that as well. I'm pretty sure I do somewhere anyway. Um, full crest. I keep that in the waiting to see if I can find the map itself. All right. Uh, this this is this is just a whole adventure. For those of you who are wondering how I write adventures, I don't know if I've talked about that before, but this literally just has a title. Uh, the history just means sort of the background. This would be my adventure hook and a couple of non-player characters that I would run. Quick notes, locations, there's only five of them, and about six encounters. And on the back I just have uh, the creatures that I would be using and the page number for and the monster manual for them. And then I've got some council members. I'm not sure what this is about, but yep, that was a one shot. Oh, there it is. There's the there's the map that goes with those notes. This one right here. We'll take that, include that, that's, that's staying. And shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right. Okay. So you've got no idea how long and how hard it was to find this map. So I'm definitely not throwing this thing out. Um, it, it was so long. None of it was condensed into one book and easy to find. You know, it, it was all sort of scattered. But I'm definitely keeping it. I probably have a digital version, but I want the um, hard copy as well. Alright, what's this? Pre-made characters, there's a level 1 monk. Do I need to keep that? No, I don't know. Well, I'll keep the, maybe the level 1 character. Okay, that's the 13th level character. No, God, Godfrey's Evil Hats. Oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. So Godfrey's Evil Hats is an adventure I created. And it's a spy adventure. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, a mixture of um, Mission Impossible. And I used some existing maps and I drew some of my own. So I'm definitely keeping this map. Um, this is the uh, Thane Vaughan... Faint Vaughan village and basically this village is uh, inundated with magical hats that are a bit like spiders that attach themselves. I use the premise behind the Robins Meet the Robinsons which is like a cartoon uh, cartoon movie and uh, literally I don't think I need to keep this though literally what I did was I had it have elements you know there was a whole lot of gadgets or magic items and I drew a whole lot of very simple maps out for that adventure and it was about a them trying to figure out how to rescue the villagers of uh, in this adventure get the hats off them because if you try to rip them off they would they would perish the villagers would um, would die so they had to find out who was controlling them and deal with that and of course their main base the villains main base was a giant flying top hat that was invisible that was sitting on top of a mountain literally sitting on top of the mountain and so they uh, find it, um, get inside, and defeat the enemies. And this adventure, I'm pretty sure the, the main villains were ma masterminds were actually small white mice. Uh, I know, sounds weird. So this is the Mistra map. Uh, and it took me a long time to find this map as well. Because I needed to figure out where the Isle of Dread or the Island of Dread was. And this sort of gave me um, a reference point. So this was the coastline here. And where they were going to, adventuring, dealing with dinosaurs and other creatures, was right over here. So I wanted to have something that sort of I could show my players. I'm keeping that. Absolutely. Alright. Moving through. So I've got a big pile of things I can chuck into my folder, which I'm glad. That's good news. A lot of lot of junk though, a lot of things that just need to go in the garden. So this, 
think this was a map I drew out by hand and then I gave it to the players and divided it up into sections so that they could sort of see roughly where they were because it was a hex crawl and it just made it a little bit easier. This was just to make my life easier and trying to figure out where they were going. I don't know that I necessarily need, do I need this map? No, I don't think I do. I'll keep this one though, even though it's hand drawn. This actually made life a lot easier. Oh, there it is. Man, I, I hunted for every um, uh, Dread Island map I could find that somebody had created themselves. And this was awesome. So definitely keeping this one. Color too, so it was always nice. Uh, and uh, what do we got here? Uh, this is just notes on the different locations. Okay, yep, don't need them. Why have I got so the song Bad to the Bone? Oh my gosh, maybe I, did I actually, I think I, I actually sung uh, to my players one day. Uh, I think Bad to the Bone, Ghost Riders in the Sky. Yep. I don't, I don't think those players that day had ever had a dungeon master sing to them at the table. And that I have done. Not very well, but I still did it. Okay. What have we got next? Uh, Lost Minor Fandelver. Oh my gosh. So this is this is my intro notes. Let's, let's open this up and have a look at this, eh? This is a Lost Minor Fandelver. Pretty popular adventure. Pretty good adventure as far as I'm concerned. It's not perfect, but it's it's not bad. So what I did is I I had to come up with information on Gundren Rockseeker because there's like nothing. And then I needed notes so I knew where to find Sildar Hallwinter's uh, notes as well and what sort of questions they could ask and I included some of the what did I included some of the oh oh that's right there were a few problems a bit of errata I included in there as well maybe I should upload that as well to Facebook you guys let me know if, and I'll put it over here just in case I forget let me know if you want that stuff and this is the Lost Mine of Fandel, a player's hand, handout. This is the background. So I, I, what I did is I, uh, I typed them up and numbered them and I just roll on a dice or I would give it to them and say, okay, this is your background. This was, oh, there's more than, oh, there's 10. This was basically uh, so that they, if they created their own character, they had some sort of connection to uh, the other NPCs or characters in the adventure. So they had some sort of, um, stake in, in the adventure. So this was my attempt to do what Horde of the Dragon Queen had, which would had at the back a background that you could allocate. And if they didn't use the pre-made characters from the starter set, then I would just give them this. And there was 10 different backgrounds. I'm going to keep this. I should, I should definitely download that so that people can access it on Facebook as well. Okay, so this is Cragmore Hideout that I printed out. We'll be keeping that. And... Uh, what's this? This is oh, this is just me. This is all the, the pieces that I I don't need to keep that. I've already got a copy of it now. Um, that's what I would just hand to the players. Crag more hideout again. I'll keep it. That's fine. Uh, Fandolin handout for the players. Not a bad map. Good location to use or reuse. And a lot of blank paper. Oh my gosh. So much blank paper. All right, we're getting through. This pile is getting smaller. I had two piles. Now we're on down to about uh, one pile and it's about, what, three quarters of the way through. And uh, for those of you who always wanted to know what the heck I, I do, well, you can see it now. For your, for your eyes, you can see exactly what's going on. Oh, gosh. So this is when I had some strange idea that it was a good idea for to help. How can I allow people to use their money and buy magic items? So I had a system where the only thing they could buy, it was called Jericho's Magnificent Magical Market. And this sheet basically was just a list of things they could buy, the costs, whether it was limited or not, rolling on a dice for see if, they, if, if it was in stock. And basically it was all stuff that would get used up. So it wasn't permanent magic items, it was... Um, ex consumable consumable magic items that they could purchase just so they had something to, to use. I included the Sun Rod as well from uh, 
Uh, what's that, uh, Joseph? Uh, will you ever give out notes for these adventures? You know, Joseph, if, if you guys remind me in the comments to this video or on Facebook and you ask me for this stuff, I will attach it as a file on Facebook to the How to D&D Facebook and you guys can get access to it. So I'm, I'm happy to share this stuff. It's not a problem. I wouldn't say it's foolproof, you know, just bear in mind. Um, I think this is reasonably safe. Some of the other things I've got, I feel like I tested and I wouldn't go back to. But you are welcome to it. If you ask for it, I will give it to you. I put it over here so I remember to upload it to Facebook. And here we got the Sword, Sword Coast. I used this map so much. When uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5e came out, I used this a lot. We're keeping that one. Uh, the Dragon Wars. Oh, that's right. I literally, I, I had arranged a another, I guess another episode to uh, Rise of Tiamat, where they actually engaged in a massive battle with the Cult of the Dragon. And I had to make up uh, a list of all of the allies for the Alliance and all of the Dragon, uh, Cult of the Dragon uh, NPCs and who was part of that. And then sort of make a list of sort of what would be taking place. And I literally wrote down a list of encounters that I could use. And I think, what did they do? They, there was an artillery, so they had to defend the trebuchet, and they failed at that. Um, they succeeded on the artillery mission to destroy the enemy's catapults and trebuchet. Uh, there was a dragon fight, so I literally had them flying on dragons all over the place. And we had a big battle. Uh, and I had a few notes on sort of how that would take place. Each one of them was riding on a dragon. I gave them a little sheet so they knew how the dragon worked. And there's a cavalry charge. They had to deal with a cavalry charge. And a, I think it was one pit fiend per, per char um, two characters. So if there was two characters at my table, there was one pit fiend for each uh, for two characters. Which sounds really horrible, but they still succeeded at that. Okay, so don't don't get too upset. Uh, the fray, the fray was the dragon cult core troops clashing with the alliance, and this is where uh, a lot easier for them to deal with. And then there was an int infiltration into the actual temple of Tarmat, or the well of the dragon. Um, so yeah, if you guys want that, I can probably put it on Facebook as well. Um, I'll put it over here just in case. If somebody says anything, then I'll do it. Okay, here's just a drawn map. So this is what I used to do, is I would have a uh, some some face cards, and on the back is all my notes for uh, the that particular character. So, you know, male, human, paladin, Sir Istival, uh, and basically a little bit of information about them. So I knew how to ro roleplay them. This is... Mike Scholl, or the Sly Flourish, or the Lazy Dungeon Master, he, he put me on to, you know, watching his video and seeing how he did this. This is why I did it. It was a great idea, it worked really well, and just little, little stickies on the back, um, and just write real small, <laughs> so you can get it all in. But yeah, at least I'll, I just need to get them back into the packet, I think. This is just a magic item list. So I used to give, when I was making magic items for my players, I would give them a specific name for that. So if you wanted that list of names, I can give you that as well. You just need to let me know. If you ask for it, you shall receive it. And this is just me updating some of the magic items that I gave to my players. Uh, what is this? I think I've already, I already mentioned this. There's already a sheet. This is basically how I used to craft magic items. Uh, this map is from an adventure I did a review on not so long ago called the Frozen Castle, but it doesn't have the numbers on it. It's just an image of the basic location, which I'm definitely keeping. Took me a little while to find that too. Okay, don't need that. It's the scoring. You know, scoring for um, the council was like, just felt like a bit of a joke. I don't think they really struggled with that at all. The Laws of Waters, Waterdeep. That's right, and I made some notes on Waterdeep, the city, because there never seems to be anything. So, if you want the notes that I compiled for that, you can have that as well. Just let me know in the comments section. 
and then Sage Advice, which will be well and truly out of date, so we'll ditch that. And it's just blank paper, and the laws of wood is deep. Um, yeah, you guys let me know if you want that as well. I can give that to you, put it up as a file. I think it was actually created by somebody else. It wasn't created by me. It's just blank paper. Okay, we're getting there. All right, so this is, this may be just character sheets rather than anything else, which will make it very, very easy and simple for me to... Yep, it's, they're all 7th level. Yep, 7th level. That's ditchable in the garden. In the garden, it goes. Okay, it's just more character sheets. Ditching, ditching, ditching. Don't need that anymore. Oh, we've got some maps coming up. Oh, is that a, re a reprint of something else? Okay, so we've been here a little while. <clears throat> okay, so I'm definitely keeping this. So this map is what I used for the Caves of Chaos or Keep on the Borderlands. So this is the keep. And this is, the, this is a coloured map of the general location. Now there is a hand-drawn one, but it's not quite as good as this. I thought this was quite awesome. I'm definitely keeping it. And, um, yeah. You just let me know if you want it. Should be able to download this as well. <coughs> Sorry. This is a the Caves of Chaos, which is Keep on the Borderlands. This is the Cave Complex. And it's all in colour. And it's reasonably easy to sort of follow because uh, somebody's taken some time to actually lay it out and give you a key as well, which is awesome. I'm keeping that as well. That I've already shown you guys, so that can be ditched. Might be a repeat of uh, maps I've used before here. Yep, it is. We'll keep it anyway. Oh, okay, this is... This looks like it is a repeat of Godfrey's Evil Hats. I might have tried to run it more than once, or did I just have more than one set of notes and I just didn't realise. Okay, alright. That can go, and that's all... Is that all blank paper? It might be. Blank paper is nice and easy to sort through. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's all blank paper. Okay, getting closer. All right, that's nice and thin. So this is what I gave to the Dungeon Masters at the uh, Dungeons and Dragons Grandmasters in New Zealand. We won't be needing that anymore. And this is the... Dread Island 3 Summary. Why is it Dread Island 3 Summary? It's a summary sheet. Oh, that's right. Basically, um, this was just a summary of my... Summary of the locations. You guys can have this if you want. You just need to let me know if you want it. I don't know that there's an awful lot of information there that you can't get from the original adventure anyway. So here's the original map. Right there. So this map is all right, but if you compare it to the, the map that somebody else did, and if I can find it and show it to you, these, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the old maps, they're, they're still good, but I feel like this is a lot cooler than this. This is a hex crawl map, so you, you, you use it for marking off where they've been, you put maybe um, you rub it out or you uh, put a line through it or a cross through it as you go. But this is why I keep keeping this map. Uh, map, And this is... Do I keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it. Just in case. Oh, this is the player version. So this is the player version. And I probably will keep this. There's a map on the back as well. What's that? Taboo Island. Yes, I remember that. I stuck a red dragon, ancient red dragon, underneath Taboo Island. And they decided to harass it. And that caused a little bit of trouble. So this is what you give to your players, and they mark out, sort of, as they go, where they've been and what's there. So I'm going to keep that as well. Oh, what's this? This is... Oh, this looks interesting. This is the... I think this is the first level of the Nine Hells. This is a map that took me a long time to find. Uh, the Plains of Carnage. The River... Um, gosh, I can't even read it. The River Stye? Stye? Something like that. The Nether Reaches. Yep, definitely keeping that. Really hard to find those. And for those of you who have run Horde of the Dragon Queen, you'd 
since I've run Horde of the Dragon Queen, you'll be familiar with this map. I'm going to keep it because it keeps coming up. Uh, every time I run an adventure, um, there seem to be ties into Horde of the Dragon Queen, particularly if you're doing Storm King's Thunder, so I might need this map later on. I have to say that S Skyreach Castle is definitely my favourite part of Horde of the Dragon Queen because it's a flying castle, the map is awesome, and the threats in there just seem great. It's just by the time they get to a certain level, it doesn't seem like it's that hard for them to manage. And uh, I did my best. Anyway. We will eventually finish the DM guide for Horde of the Dragon Queen. So this, oh, this is the, the sheet that I showed you of my list of magic items. So I've already got, I've already grabbed that. So, um, although that's blank, that might be more useful to me. I might keep that. Skyreach Castle, the location areas. You might want that as well. It's just a quick summary sheet that I've already showed you. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, oh, this is something different. So what is this is the revised version. Uh, Dr. Merlid's, Merlid's? Dr. Merlid's Marvelous Bazaar. Or th I think it's actually essentially the same as the other one that I showed you, which is, you know, for buying consumables, selling and buying potions and scrolls. The only difference is I changed the name. That'll be it. It's probably just... Just the only thing I changed. I'll keep it for now. You guys let me know if you want it. All right. Okay. Gone to hell. Oh, that's right. I wrote an adventure when they go to hell. Asmodeus, Astra, non-player characters, a whole lot of stuff. Just a few quick notes. I don't think it's worth giving out to anybody around that adventure. And um, I like the idea of, you know, if the characters died, then I would continue the adventure in hell, particularly if they were uh, of a persuasion or alignment that wasn't exactly good. Keep this map as well. This is, um, I can't remember which adventure it's, oh, that's right, the Twilight Marsh. There's a marsh adventure in here somewhere for the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League. That's right. And this looks like... Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League stuff. I don't really need that anymore. I'm not going to be doing that stuff anymore. Not at all. Uh, these are level 1 character sheets. I might keep these. I might use them. can never have too many level 1 pre-made character sheets. I've got a folder for them already. Or a little, should I say, an envelope. Oh my gosh, what is this? This brings back, back memories. I don't think they're good memories though. Let's open it up and see what it is. Okay. So we've only got one more after this and then I'm done. And then I'm going to stick everything in my folder. Okay. Oh my god, is this... Oh, this is Princes of the Apocalypse. This has got to be that. Oh, this was such an appalling adventure to run. My players just pleaded and said, look, it's awful, we don't like it. And I totally, totally understand. So here's a map of Red Larch that I uh, printed out. I'll keep that. There's nothing wrong with Red Larch, it's just I didn't like Princes of the Apocalypse, that's, that's all. It's, it's, it's not so much the adventure itself and the locations, it's just it's, it's horribly structured for a dungeon master. But how are you supposed to run something that doesn't have an index that is a sandbox and completely sandboxy? And uh, if you're starting off, it's in the middle of the book. You're level one, you're starting off, it's in the middle of the book. And it's not completely clear. They don't give you a nice sort of start off so you know how to lead into the adventure. You have to read the entire thing and then piece together all this stuff. This is what it was. This is where I started making an index for this thing. Oh my gosh. That's why, because I got so confused by it, I decided I'd sit down and spend hours and hours making an index so I could run the thing. And then eventually they said, no, we don't want to play it anymore. And I wound up giving it to somebody else to use. Princess, uh, this. Okay, this is just a section that they, they allowed people to have access for free. But it's essentially just 
content straight out of the book with just a tiny bit I don't think there was very, very much in terms of additional information that was part of this um, there are some maps in here though I forgot about that do I want to keep them the necromancer's cave I don't know I feel like it's left such a sour mark on me that maybe keeping these maps is, is just going to bring back bad memories if you were to break up all of the um, little locations into separate adventures it would make a, gr a great book Princes of the Apocalypse is great for running like short little adventures and just ditch the whole premise that it used to have uh, it, would, it would be awesome like that but I think anything else is just trouble and I've done a review most people who have watched my channel for any length of time know how I feel about that particular um, adventure I don't know if I want to reuse these maps I like this map a lot it's just not big enough this is the problem you know they give us a map and it was like part of a page and I really wanted like a full page or at least half full page would be best half a page would be great why this could not have been laid out on the yeah I just yeah it's it's just going to bring back bad memories for me I'm 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 just going to ditch that whole lot it's, it just it just annoys me a whole adventure book full of content and um, and they just screwed the pooch with it anyway stop with the negative stuff let's just keep focused focused on what we're doing here uh, this is more notes don't need to keep them all right so I've got a big pile of maps now as I'm sorting through all of my my junk let's get real a lot of this is, is just keeping your notes and definitely is it's junk once the campaign's done it's time to sort of cull it and move on so I use this seek revenge I feel like oh that's right there were a lot of princes of the apocalypse there it is Princes of the Apocalypse had so many different backgrounds or um, player character hooks or goals you could give them. That's one of the things I thought they did really well. They just didn't need, have enough lead into actually what was going on. If they'd done that, then it would have been would have been great. And an index needed an index. Okay, uh, this is what is this? I feel like this might be going way way back to what was this this might be Horde of the Dragon Queen when I was running Horde of the Dragon Queen so this somebody made this as a joke uh, Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League had uh, magic cards um, that were printed on card that you had to order they don't do that anymore and somebody decided to have a bit of a joke and this is called the Wondrous Halberd of the Flumpo, f flump apocalypse. Basically, what it does is it summons flumps, spawns them. It's really weird. Uh, and yes, I'm ditching that. It was a fun joke at the time. Uh, Parnest. Parnest is uh, the town that's near the end of Horde of the Dragon Queen. I'm keeping that map. I might wind up having to give that out at some point although I'm going to try to avoid it I, don't, I want to try to keep my players focused on the uh, the real goals in Storm King's Thunder and uh, I don't feel like going back and revisiting an adventure I've already run it's like eating old pizza okay lots and lots of notes bits of paper that I don't need anymore oh, what's this? this is interesting I wonder what is on that. It's got to be all sorts of information. We'll check it later. Okay. So this has at least uh, stirred up uh, a few few memories and produced a few things that I can share with you on Facebook um, and upload. Just uh, just need to know if you want these things. If you if you spotted it when I was talking about it and you really want it, then let me know. All right. So close. I'm almost to the end almost to the end Lord of the Dragon Queen on the road notes oh gosh are we there yet 
10 wagons and cabin, uh, caravan. Yeah, I made notes about all, just about everything. This is when I insisted on typing everything up. This is when I decided I needed to be a proper dungeon master and everything had to be spelled out. Okay. I just do not have time for that sort of thing now, uh, which is why I'm very selective about the adventures I run. And, okay. What's this? What's this? What's this? It's just a stat block for the nightmare. I don't need that. And... Oh, I'm so close. It's almost there. Sorting through, trying to find everything. I highly recommend when you're making your, up your own folder for maps to find maps on the internet that you like. Blow them up, print them out on an A4 size and then put them into a folder, particularly if the maps you know you're going to reuse. If you don't think you're going to reuse a map, then why would you bother putting them into anything? And this, what is this so far? A template. Uh, this supplement was provided by Montreal D&D &D Adventure League. Okay. Leeson. Story so far. I feel like this is... Horde of the Dragon Queen. The background stuff. Yeah. We don't need to worry about that. It's in the Horde of the Dragon Queen back of the adventure book anyway. Okay, so this... These are all the maps I'm going to keep. These are the ones that are going to go into my folder and I'm going to uh, reuse at some point or I just like and I feel like I need to keep. Um, the ones that you really like the most I tend to put at the front. The ones that you think you're going to use the most. And as I said, I like this sort of thing rather than punching holes in my maps. Uh, Parnast is definitely up there in the top echelons of uh, definitely want to keep, so we'll keep keep that close by. So I don't see too many more questions in here. Look, this is this has really been a very strange video. I know a lot of people think, well, you know, what's the what's the deal, Fred? Uh, you said dungeon master map folding workshop. Literally, it's just been you sorting through your notes to create uh, a folder full of maps that you think you're going to reuse. And that, that is essentially what I've done. I mean, uh, let's not, I'm not going get, to uh, get silly about this, but that's essentially what I've done. I would pick the ones you like the most. That's what I'm going to do. And then uh, that'll be sort of the, the, a, the a list for anything that I have. Uh, anything else will go sort of further at the back. Oh, come on you, get in there. And you can do the same sort of thing when you are um, doing any kind of prep, particularly for uh, improvising, making up a folder of random stuff is a good idea too. I would definitely go with something like that. I'm going to put that aside. I'm keeping this near the front because I like it so much. And we'll slide that in. Oh, come on you. Just slide in there. It's the shuffling problem. Yeah, plastic and paper sometimes doesn't like one slide on it. And yeah, I think I'm keeping that map. I might reuse it. At least it's got a, a, a label on it. So I, it wouldn't take me long to come up with um, details on eight locations within that town. Even if I don't use the ones that I created originally. Look. Come on, you. Yeah. Open up. Go on there. Go on there. Go on there. There we go. Ha! Oh, there we go. What's that, Joseph? It's a um, it's a pretty rad collection. Yeah, I I have a lot. I ran far too many adventures at one point. In fact, I would have to say that I ran so many that I almost burnt myself out. Let's um, let's put this one up here as well. Even though I'm not necessarily, this is like the spine of the world. Um, and although you might not necessarily get to re reuse this, I still like the map a lot. I don't know what it is. I'm attached to it. I can't help myself. But there's a big pile of stuff here. 
to shuffle in. And oh, this is that's this is the only hassle of using the plastic sleeves is they just don't slide in nicely. All right, and that can go with this one. You never know, I might come back to the Caves of Chaos, although if I ever did, I think I would repopulate it with something else. That's what I did with the um, Eyes of Dread, I actually repopulated the Eyes of Dread. We're definitely keeping the Sword Coast, this particular map has been extremely useful. And Fandolin, absolutely keeping that as well. Maps I will definitely reuse, particularly if I have to run adventures in Forgotten Realms. And if somebody was saying, oh, do you use the maps from the Fey Room? Well, I absolutely do. I've got heaps of them. And we'll pop that in there. I am trying to work on um, a Lost Mine of Fandalva workshop, which is a little bit different. I mean, I've already done one. But what I wanted to do was do something a little bit different that you guys have never seen before. And... Uh, I'm going to put lay, lay everything out. I'm going to break it up into sections. I should have broken it up into sections when I first did it. That first workshop, you know. Uh, if I broken it up to sections or episodes or chapters, would have made it a lot easier for you guys to follow. Um, I've already got one of these, so I can ditch this. I definitely want to keep that one. It was so hard to find that map. Reprinting stuff is just a, a giant pain sometimes, and that we're keeping for sure. Oh, come here. In you go. And now it's not, uh, I think I actually got this from some other dungeon master who gave it to me. And I'll put the notes behind there, so I can come back to it. Lots of pre-made stuff. And look, with, with your own locations and your own maps and so forth, I would, you know, you know I have a map book, I draw my own maps, and it's just a little notebook. But if you've got your own maps that you spend a bit of time on and you've printed up, I would keep them in a folder for later on, because you never know. Particularly, a lot of Dungeon Masters like to reuse content from their own world. And in Felcrest, uh, I've got a map for Felcrest and I've got the notes for it. There it is. I'll put that in there as well. Oh, come on you. Hellcrest, in you go. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Ugh. There we go. That's done. And then the notes for it go in the back. Okay, and this is a general map of that whole location, so I'm definitely going to keep that as well. I'm not so um, sure that I'll keep the Pathfinder world maps. Um, I don't feel like the world of Pathfinder is anything more than a... There's so many humans in it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a variety. Um, I, I might just put that there for now. Falcon's Hollow though, even though it is Pathfinder, there's definitely room for it to be used again. I can plop it anywhere I like. Two of the two copies of it, so I'll just chuck them in here. Come here. Go in there. You know you want to. There we go. Yeah, separate it. Oh, what did I do? Did I skip a... Yeah, I need to put something in here. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. These are the older maps. These are... I'm going to put this one in here. Even though it's only got a few locations, still like the map. Use the location, uh, I think, for about two sessions, maybe one or two sessions, and then that was it. Okay, so now we're getting into all sorts of stuff. I feel like I'm going to put these in the back, back section for now. And that is the Mines of... Man, it, yep, put them in the back. Millennium Falcon stay in the back. I keep Barsoom though, I like Barsoom. I always enjoy that. Now you can sort it and organize it as you wish. You can see I am just sort of uh, just trying to shove, shove things in here. Create a bit of space. 
you'd be amazed at how much paper I've just uh, just created uh, for my garden now. It'll keep the weeds down and help uh, nourish the soil rather than just relying on the weed mat. Okay, those, I think what I'll do is I'll take them and I'll put them further back. And this, this I'm going to keep. The adventure is designed for multiple players, but um, I still think it's a pretty awesome, awesome adventure. I'll put that in here. And I have some, there's the black and whites behind, the color version and the larger one. I think what I'll do is I'll just lay that over the top and then just put that like so. Essentially the same map, just one colour, one black and white. Oh, it's upside down. What am I doing? I don't want it upside down. I want it the other way. Here we go. Here we go. Cool. Alright, so uh, Castle Ravenloft can go somewhere else for now. Those continent maps, not too sure. Okay, alright, well I will probably file the rest of these into my folder um, and sort through them and then decide on my this is my seed pile now but I now have a folder full of maps and uh, these are the maps I'm going to keep and that's it that's all you need to do is just go through and decide sort of what you think you're going to use again or what you liked I tend to find that what I like is what's what I'll tend to use again and then just make up your own folder simple as that piece of cake nothing to it and all I've done is I've pulled all this stuff from um, older adventures that I have written or I have uh, played or run from a pre-published adventure. So not very difficult to do and you can do exactly the same thing and this is a really good resource for later on. So look, if you found this video content helpful or informative then hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you like this sort of thing, I don't actually do this sort of thing very often. This is sort of right behind, um, you know, this is not the stuff I normally show you guys. This is, And I know it's full of a lot of useless footage, I imagine, and me just sorting through bits of paper. But um, if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, I will do it. Just let me know down in the comments section. Uh, you can let me know in the... Uh, in the chat as, as well but down in the comments then I will get reminded that I need to actually do more of this sort of thing uh, if you are not subscribed then hit that subscribe button and on my channel there is a bell button beside the subscribe button and that will give you notifications when I go live and you as you can see I'm live right now I'm go live often uh, or when I publish a video put a new video up I do videos just about every single day uh, if you want to support my channel, then watch my videos. It's the best thing you can do. I get a bit of AdSense revenue. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description, you'll find affiliate links to pretty much anything you want to buy online. And uh, I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price. Thank you for subbing the Italy Maker 101. Did I get it right? The Chili Maker. Ah. I love the name, the Chili Maker 101. Sounds scary. Um, so yeah, if you if you like this sort of thing, then hit that um, subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications when I go live and when I'm doing more videos or when I publish them. And like I said, you know, supporting me down in the description, I have affiliate links. I get a small commission. You pay exact same price. Good for both of us. Uh, and that is going to be it. We are going to sign out. I'm going to let you guys go and have a good day. I imagine for most of you it is a Saturday, unless of course you're in New Zealand and it's Sunday and you should be doing something else and I should be doing something else as well. So till then, I'll see you later.